Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Liberty Magic at Home, a project of the Pittsburgh Cultural Trust. On tonight's show, we feature two magicians from Liberty Magic's inaugural season, third generation conjurer Dennis Watkins and mentalist extraordinaire Mark Tolan. And of course, our host for the evening, from her basement in Braddock Hills, put your hands together for Zoe Root. Welcome back, my friends. Uh, tonight, we are going to continue our virtual tour of the magical world, city by city, with a visit to Chicago uh, and a little time spent with two magicians based there who you may have seen perform live on the Liberty Magic stage in 2019. First, I would love to remind you to donate to the Pittsburgh Cultural Trust at trustarts.org slash donate. Alrighty, let's welcome to the show the first mentalist to ever grace the Liberty Magic stage, Mark Toland. Hey, Zoe. Hey, Mark, how's it going? So good. How are you doing? Pretty good. How's the weather there in the Windy City? Finally getting nice. <laughs> yeah, us too. We've had some a couple of nice days. That's great. Yeah. yeah. So how's your quarantine been? Um surprisingly busy i like i had a bunch of shows my uh you know like many other performers i'm not alone my calendar got completely emptied just decimated by the pandemic uh you know and uh then uh, a lot of that converted into online things similar to what we're doing here so um luckily at least i was able to convert those shows they were mostly colleges in the spring semester into virtual and we'll see what that means moving forward but you know i was fortunate to do that and uh, right. you know, trying to make the, the most of it. Absolutely. Well, uh, now, Mark, I saw your show, Mind Reader at Liberty Magic. And, and when I saw that, I was so pretty new to the world of magic. You were actually the very first mentalist I ever saw perform. And, and your show really shifted all of my preconceived notions about not only what mentalism was, but what more broadly magic was. Um, and I think that's because, you know, you approach um, your show with really full honesty. You know, you create these moments that really truly feel like you are peering into my mind while simultaneously reminding me over and over again that you possess no supernatural powers. Um, you've got a TED talk uh, called Honest Lies that you viewers at home should definitely check out. It's all about this. And so I guess I'm, I'm wondering if you could talk a little bit about you know, why you choose to frame your work so honestly like that and, and what drew you to the world of mentalism, uh, if not convincing people that you have superhuman abilities? Oh, wow. What a, what a stunning, thoughtful question. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm flattered and I, I appreciate that. That means a lot because I, uh, you know, I, I work hard on the show. I just wanted to, to come across how passionate I am about it. And uh, I come from like a very uh theatrical background you know i grew up in community theater I, ha I have a bfa in music theater i've always wanted to be on stage um and there is a storied history in this field in in the the field i'm in of people using these methods and techniques whatever you want to call them for nefarious means right we've got uh charlatan evangelicals we've got faith healers we've got you know fraudulent psychics all of these people who use these techniques but claim powers and swindle people out of their money and so that really rubs me the wrong way and so that TED talk you mentioned is kind of that background of, of a turning point for me when I had a conversation with someone at an airport that shaped my thinking as far as that goes. Um, as far as mentalism, I've been doing it like my whole life. When I was younger, I was just into that. So, uh, you know, I kind of think as opposed to having supernatural skills, it's a combination of psychological trickery and tricky psychology that I get to kind of, you know, put those skills together in a theatrical framework and mess with people's minds. And uh, what better place to be honest than on stage, I think, where I can give people something they don't get to experience very often in 2020, which is mystery, the feeling of not knowing. And so I would much rather they leave with a mystery instead of being like, oh, he's just supernaturally gifted or something like that, right? Yeah, totally. Well, well, speaking of being honest on a stage, how about we be a little honest on our virtual stage? If I welcome onto the show a couple of audience volunteers, could you show us a little bit about what you mean? Fantastic. Oh, here they are. Awesome. Oh, well, here is Josh and Pam. Uh, Josh and B Pam have been to several Liberty Magic shows driving all the way to the Berg from Indiana County just for us. Yeah, <laughs> it's been it's been great going to the theater there and we can't wait to come back. Well, thanks so much for joining us uh, at our virtual theater tonight. Yeah. Uh, Mark, why don't you go for some mental magic? Let's do it. Let's do it. 
Um, Josh and Pam, it's so uh, great to have you here. I'm, I'm thrilled to meet you virtually, so thanks for doing this. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, uh, being a mind reader, I'm gonna be working with your thoughts and your ideas. Before I do anything, and especially uh, for the people watching, I wanna point out this envelope, which will be important in just a few minutes. We'll get back to it, but for now, I just wanna make you aware of this envelope so you know it's there. Um, I figured tonight, in, in our short time together, I would, I would try two things which are essentially the two skills I demonstrated um, at my show, Liberty Magic, which is one, I want to try to send you a thought. So I'm going to get one of the two of you to guess something I have in mind. And I'm going to try to receive a thought, hopefully, and read your mind. Yeah, so kind of two-way street. So okay. maybe I'll start with, uh, we'll do a Josh uh, to begin, if that's all right. Then I'll move to Pam in a moment. Um, Josh, I want to get you to think of some things. Let me see here. Um, I think someone told you to grab a pen and paper. Yeah, you got a pen and paper handy. We're ready. Okay, Josh, I've got my phone here. Now, you've been to Liberty Magic, so you know about the VIP experience there where you buy a special yeah. ticket, you go backstage and meet the performer up close and see more. This is something that I used to do backstage. And what it is, is I would borrow someone's phone and, um, you know, do this exact thing that you're about to see up close. But since we're in quarantine, I'm going to use my own phone and I have ways to make sure that you trust me here. So I'm going to Google and I'm going to search for something, but I will not tell you what this is quite yet. So give me one second. Okay. Uh, let it load. There we go. Okay. So I'm going to leave this right here so you can see. So hopefully all the viewers can see. Now, Josh, I want you to think of someone famous, someone super famous. Maybe don't go for someone in Pittsburgh or someone obvious like that because, you know, that might be seen to the viewers as a setup or stage or something like that. Make it kind right. of world famous so that everyone, everywhere in the world will know who this is. Think of someone super famous. You can go through a few in your mind. Let me know when you have someone in mind, someone we would all know. Got it. Okay. I want you to change your mind. And I know I'm asking a lot of you, but change your mind now. To someone else. So now you're thinking of someone that you didn't even know you were going to think of. Okay. Okay. I want you to yeah. write it down, whoever this second person is, hopefully world famous, right? Super duper famous. And hold that name up so everyone can see. And the reason I have you do this is so that we all know, but no one watching thinks this is voice activated because it's not. Okay. I do this with someone else's phone backstage yeah. or under these circumstances. So hold that and we'll, we'll make it so that everyone can see. Um, okay. Here we go. Yeah, yeah, don't say it, but there we go. Perfect. Oh, that's such a, such a good one. I'm not going to say the name. I think everyone can see that, and everyone knows who that is. Now, Josh, this is this is really exciting. You went through a few names in your mind, I'm guessing, and settled on that one, right? Yeah, I did. I did. The reason why you settled on that name? Just, just a random pick. That's exactly who I had in mind, Josh. Whoa! <laughs> All right! <laughs> that is fantastic. That, I'm... Thrilled that it's so impossible. Oh, <laughs> very good. That's very good. Oh man. Okay. So that's a, that's sending a thought, right? Uh, that's exciting that that works. Sometimes you know you might have gone for a female singer, musician, or something. I can say Lady Gaga now. You nailed it, Josh. So fantastic. Yeah. fantastic. Let's do the opposite with uh, with Pam. So Pam, um, I want to try to guess something about you, if that's okay. 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 <laughs> you seem totally fine with this. Um, Pam, I, uh, I want you to think of a memory that, that's happy to you in some way, right? So it could be from this year, it could be years ago, but some kind of memory, something that jumped out at you, just a happy memory. <laughs> Do you have something in mind? Do you have something in mind? No happy memory. <laughs> She's she's got she's got too many to count. I think too many to count. That's well, that's, that's a good problem. problem to have. Do you, do you have something in mind, Pam? Or need a moment longer? It's okay if you do. I can explain um, what what we're about to do. Do you do you have a memory? You don't have to you don't have to put pressure on yourself to have the perfect memory <laughs> because this is simple, right? So what's exciting and personal to you may not be exciting and personal to someone else, but that's what makes it special to you. So it could be as simple as sitting on your porch going on a road trip, it doesn't matter, just as long as you have some special memory in mind. Do you have something? Okay, okay. Sure. great, that, that's great. What I love about this, and I'm, I'm happy that you took a, a moment to come up with something, is everyone watching knows this is real and happening right now. 
Um, to be completely transparent, we met like a minute before we came on just to say hi, so I could I could say hi and thank you. But yeah, would you tell everyone you you didn't know and you have no idea what's about to happen, right? Yeah. Okay. We have no idea. That I don't even going. know what's about to happen, okay. and I'm the host. Okay, good, good. So, so, <laughs> so Pam, um, this memory, whatever you're thinking in your mind, I'd like you to put a time with it, a time of day, so hours and minutes. So, for instance, when I was younger, one of my favorite times of day was 5.30. That was when my dad came home from work, and I, I just it was like clockwork. He'd come up the street and park, and I knew he was coming home, play basketball with us or chess or something like that, right? I was born at 8.45. 315 is when you get out of school, right? So if you're not exactly sure, just make one up that's kind of right. If it was afternoon, evening, morning, just come up with a time, hours and minutes in your mind. Can you do that? Okay. Okay. And just to make this extra specific, just change the minutes ever so slightly. So instead of being perfect, like 530 for my dad, for instance, I might say 532, 533, something like that. So just tweak it a little. So now you're thinking of something super specific, something I couldn't possibly know. Okay. Okay. Very good. <laughs> I'm my watch here. I think you'll find this uh, interesting. Um, if you tell me what the memory was, would it give away the time? I don't think so. Okay. If you tell me the memory, I will guess the time. Okay. I was thinking when I went on a cruise. You went on a cruise. Did you go anywhere special or was it just a cruise? The Bahamas. The Bahamas. Fantastic. Okay. So let me think about this. And you have an hours and minutes in mind because yeah. it's kind of abstract because I'm assuming the cruise wasn't 60 seconds long. No. <laughs> okay. um, so get that hours and minutes in mind. That's spectacular. And let me just consider this for a moment. Um, okay. I'll go with something. <laughs> I'll go with something like this. Okay. Sorry. It just takes a second. There we go. Yeah, I'll stick with that. Okay. Pam, you thought of a memory. You settled on a time. Tell me, what was the time? Do I need to write it down or do I just no, say you it? Can, No, you can say it. <laughs> what was I, it? 6.33. 6.33. So was it 6.30 that you thought of and then you, you went forward a couple of minutes or? Yeah. Okay. 6.33, yes? Yes. Hopefully we can get this on camera, but I think you'll see. <laughs> Oh, wow. All right. Whoa. That's exactly what I thought of. 633, huh? That's fantastic. Oh, Mark. I'm just saying, was that like dinner dinner at the cruise or something? 633 like that? I didn't even know. I just picked something that. Was this was this a recent cruise or a long time ago? It was a, probably a while ago. How many years? Okay. Maybe 2014. Okay. 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 So it's been a while and you had to dig in there to find this memory. Yeah, I had to pick something. I don't know. Pam, I am so happy this worked out. And anyone, please, anyone that asked you about this, be honest with them and tell them this was not set up in any way. I've had this envelope in plain sight the whole time. And you will see, hopefully, business card here. I put my business card in. I wrote you a little message. Oh, my God. Oh, gosh. my God. Oh, oh. Okay. <laughs> Cruise in the Bahamas. That is the memory I was picturing this morning. And uh, I'm really happy that it worked out the way it did. Wow. Like, cruise. Yeah. Like another one. Okay. Oh my God. Wow. That's amazing. <laughs> Thank you so much. Oh, oh my gosh, wow. Mark. That's so good. <laughs> Thank you. Every uh, time. It's just, it's creepy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, uh, thank you so much, uh, Josh and Pam. Josh and Pam, thank you so much for hanging out with Mark and I for that piece of magic. You guys were spectacular. Could not have read your minds without them here. All right. Hey, thanks a lot. And stay safe, both of you, please. Yeah, you too. Thank you, guys. You as well. We'll see ya. Um, Mark, always a pleasure to work with you. Um, Mind-blowing, as usual. Oh, thanks. Thanks. It was great to see you. Yeah. Well, hey, um, I hope Chicago has proven to be comfortable. And uh, give your cats a scratch for me, Mark. All right, my friends. Well, we aren't done just yet. Uh, let's now welcome back to the show third generation magician who has been performing his show, The Magic Parlor, at the Palmer House Hilton Hotel for eight years and counting now. You saw him do some money magic at the top of the episode, Dennis Watkins. 
Hello, Zoe. Thank you so much for having me. I am very, very excited to be with you guys from Liberty Magic here today. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, absolutely. It's just so great to work with you again, Dennis. Well, likewise. Hey, so tell me, what have you been doing with your time in quarantine? A little virtual magic, I think? Been doing a little bit of virtual magic. That's right. You know, uh, the quarantine time is pretty crazy. My box office got shut down and all of my events have been canceled or moved. And so I've taken all my work and put it right here in my basement studio. Though it looks like I'm in the lobby of the Palmer House. This is my green screen. And I've been working on creating virtual magic for a live stream that I do called the Magic Parlor Happy Hour every two weeks and uh, virtual magic for my clients. My corporate and private clients have been booking shows that I can perform from right here. All of that while uh, trying to keep my 13 month old son alive and healthy. Oh, that's so great. That sounds like definitely a full-time job and a half. Uh, well, is. Dennis, I would love for you to dive in, into some magic for us tonight, but I know that your style of magic relies really pretty heavily on aud audience volunteers. So let's welcome to the show our audience volunteers, Maureen and Angelo. Hi. Hi. How's it Hello. going, guys? Great. Good. Awesome. How are you well, doing uh, You're good? Yes, we are. We're ready for some magic. Yeah, we're excited to be here. All right, Dennis, dive right in. We're ready. You bet. Well, Maureen and Angelo, I tell the folks who come and see my show at the Palmer House that they are the true magicians, that it is, in fact, your thoughts and your choices and your imaginations that create the real magic. So I thought we'd jump right out of the gate with you doing a piece of magic for us. Do you guys have a deck of cards with you? Yes. We do. Outstanding. Would you mind grabbing those cards? And each of you just take four cards. Any four cards will do. It doesn't matter what they are. And just put the rest of the deck aside. So each of you will have four. We don't need the rest. Let me know when you got those. Got them. Outstanding. First things first, we, the three of us, uh, and Zoe, are you doing this with us too? Outstanding. I am. So the four of us are going to perform a little bit of a ritual. It is a ritual intended to bring joy and wonder into our lives. It uses four playing cards, and we start by mixing them up. So everybody, if you would, please mix your cards. Shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. Mix them up. Make sure that you change the order. With only four cards, it doesn't take long. And then hold them in the palm of your hand, face down like you're about to deal a poker hand. All good? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Once you've done that, you're gonna cut and complete your cut. With only four cards, that means you take either one, two, or three off the top, you move them to the bottom. That's all you gotta do. Go for it, friends. And once you have cut and complete, you have a choice. You can cut and complete again if you'd like. You don't have to, that cut is optional. I'm gonna do it and I'm gonna cut it a different place just for fun. And now, this is the most difficult part of the ritual, friends. Take the first two fingers and thumb of your left hand and grab the edge of the cards like this. Take the first two fingers and thumb of the right hand and grab the other edge like this and just tear those cards in half. Keeping half in each hand. Don't mix those up yet. And once you've done that, just say done so that I know you're ready to move forward. Done. Done. Perfect. Done. Now we all have a choice to make. You can put either the right half on top of the left or the left on top of the right. It's up to you. I'm going to do it like this. And then hold them just like this, like you're about to deal a hand again. Let me know when you're there. Ready? Outstanding. Now we cut and complete. So just take a handful from the top and move them to the bottom. And once you've done that, we're all going to take the top one, two, and three pieces. Three pieces off the top and shove them somewhere into the middle of your pile. Not on top, not on bottom, but somewhere in the middle. Doesn't matter where. And then hold them in your hand like you're about to deal. Oh, uh, and you know what? I'm sorry, friends. I'm new to performing magic on the internet. So I forgot a step, but that's okay. We'll just do it now. Go ahead and take the piece that's on top of your pile there. And without looking at it, just set it aside. We're going to save that for later. Just make sure it's in a place where it's safe and secure. You can access it in a bit. That being done, we're ready to move on. Uh, let's say, Maureen, why don't you make a choice for us? Pick a number, one, two, or three. 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 She says three, so everybody's going to take three pieces off the top, and you're going to shove them somewhere into the middle of your pile. Not on top, not on bottom, but somewhere in the middle. Thank you. Three was a very good choice. Uh, now, oh, you know what, Maureen and Angelo, you're doing this together in the same room, so why don't each of you take the piece off the top of your pile and trade with the other person, put theirs on top of your pile. Okay. Great. 
And once you've done that, I want to remind you that this is indeed a ritual intended to bring joy and wonder into your life. So if you feel like you're doing well in the joy and wonder department today, take one piece off the top. If you need a little boost, take two pieces off the top. If you need a big boost, take three pieces. So you take one, two or three, it's up to you and throw them away. We don't want them. We don't need them. This means likely, since we all made our own choice, that we likely all have different size piles. And that makes it even more fun. When I discovered this ritual, it was a week-long ordeal. We haven't the time for that, so we're going to move fast. Everybody take a piece from the top and move it to the bottom and say, Sunday. 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 Good work. Next piece goes from the top to the bottom as we say, Monday. 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 Next piece, and we say, Tuesday. 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 Next piece goes top to the bottom as we say Wednesday. 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 Next piece goes as we th say Thursday. 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 The next piece as we say Friday. 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 And the last piece as we say Saturday. 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 Outstanding. Our week is done. Now we purge. Take the piece from the top, move it to the bottom, then take the next piece and throw it away. That is a cycle you will continue until you're down to one piece. Take a piece from the top, move it to the bottom, take the next one, throw it away. And keep that up, top to the bottom, next one, throw it away until you're down to one piece. And look at this, friends. Because of your choices, because of our ritual, I have a perfect magical match, and so should you. Can you show us your pieces to get it? No. <gasps> yes. Wow. Good work, team. Yeah, you are in well. fact amazing. Magical. I'm proud of you. Good job. <gasps> that is so magical. Oh, I love it. I'm not even good at following directions, and it worked. <laughs> <laughs> That's because you're magic, Zoe. Oh, thank you, Dennis. Uh, well, hey, Maureen and Angela, I know you guys have a couple questions for Dennis. Why don't you go ahead and ask? Yeah, you want to ask? Go ahead. Yeah, you know what? I, I heard that you're, um, you learned magic from your grandfather, and I wondered how your parents and your family felt about you becoming a performer of magic. <laughs> That's a funny question. Encourage you know, it or not? They certainly did. My, my granddad was a magician, and he ran a magic shop for 30 years, and so it was very much in our family. I think I have a lot of colleagues who told their parents, their families, they were going to be magicians and their parents said, oh my gosh, well, uh, don't you have a backup plan? I thought you were going to go to law school. This is horrible, whatever. Uh, my family, my mom, I remember saying, well, then I think you should take some acting lessons because you should get more comfortable on stage if that's what you want to do. Uh, and from there on, they were completely supportive of me. Um, again, it was sort of the family business. My uncle did it for a long time too. So it wasn't a surprise to anybody. And I think that for my family, they could picture what a life in magic was like. And I think that's a pretty much a, a mystery for a lot of families, not for mine. That's great. And Angela, did you have a question as well? Yeah, I did. Uh, so you've been performing or uh, practicing your art since you were a kid. How did it feel to perform in front of Penn and Teller on national TV? Oh man, it was, uh, it was a blast. Um, I, Grew up watching Penn and Teller. You know, they've been heroes of mine for a long time. Uh, and so the opportunity to go and do their show was pretty darn exciting for me. Not to mention the fact that I am a huge Buffy the Vampire Slayer fan and Allison Hannigan was the host that year. And yeah. I was very excited to meet Allison as well. So there were three people in that room that I was desperately wanting to spend some time with. And I got to spend time with all of them. That was great. But, you know, it was uh, it was a nerve wracking experience. I love performing magic. I do a whole lot of shows, nearly 400 shows a year, all for folks who are non magicians. And I, I admit that I get nervous when I perform for magicians. And when I was performing for two magicians who were very much heroes of mine, I was incredibly nervous. And for a sleight of hand guy, I have this horrible thing that happens to me when I get nervous, my hands shake, right? And if you're doing sleight of hand and cards, you know, this this thing just looks horrible, right? And I can remember a moment while we were shooting where I had to just stop and take a deep breath because I could feel my hands shaking. I was so nervous. But I was doing a piece of magic that I really love that I performed for a long time. So knowing how to do the magic and being confident and that was fine. It was just uh, sheer nerves of being on TV and with those three folks in the room. But at the end of it, really exhilarating. Oh, I bet. 
Uh, well, hey, Maureen and Angelo, thank you so much for those great questions. Um, and thank you for sacrificing your playing cards with me today for that piece of magic. And I thought they would come back together. <laughs> yes, no, that, no, that, that would be a little bit more magic to actually no. have an unripped playing card at the end. Dennis, work on that for us. I'm on um, it, Well, <laughs> I would love for you both to stick around for just a minute. Dennis has requested your help for that final piece of magic. So we'll see you two again soon. Um, Dennis, thank you so much for spending a little time with us tonight. I know that even during these slowed down times, you've got a pretty tightly packed schedule, especially with, with that 13 month old uh, thrown into the mix there. Great. Well, I'm um, happy to do it. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, we'll see you soon for that closing piece. Now, uh, thank you again to all of you at home for tuning in to support arts in Pittsburgh. Uh, next week, Liberty Magic at Home will be taking a short break to make airspace for the Dollar Bank Three Rivers Arts Festival. Um, and this year, it'll be dry even if it rains because we're going completely digital. Uh, that's right. You'll be able to find all your favorite Three Rivers Arts Festival activities like the artist markets and live stream events, everything totally free, arts resources. It's going to be really fun and all online. Now, the following week, tune back in right here, same time, same virtual channel uh, for a really special episode of Liberty Magic at Home. Um, we're going to be partnering with the Dollar Bank Three Rivers Arts Festival to produce an incredibly special episode featuring Derek Hughes and Nathan Christopher. Now, Nathan was the illustrator of the inspiring children's book written by Derek Hughes. Uh, that was the framework for his live show. So you may be familiar with this, Humpty Dumpty Lived Near a Wall. Um, we're going to be talking about the book, about Derek's magic, um, and about arts in collaboration. Now, until then, don't forget to donate at trustarts.org slash donate. Sign up for emails at trustarts.org slash email. Now, that's all for me tonight. Dennis, Maureen, Angelo, take it away. Outstanding. Uh, well, hello again, Maureen and Angelo. I need a little help from one of you, and I'm going to let you decide who wants to play, Maureen or Angelo. Maureen. I'll play. Maureen, outstanding. We're gonna do a little something with a deck of playing cards, or rather, we don't need the whole deck, we just need a handful of cards. So let's uh, let's say we take this small grouping. And I'm gonna set these, Maureen, in a circle, like so. And I'm gonna make the card that's between us, the, the, what is that, it looks like the seven of clubs, closest to the camera here, that's home base. I'm gonna mark it home base with the box, yes? And now, Maureen, I'm going to toss you a very special prop. I'll just toss it right through the camera lens. I need you to catch. Will you catch? This is a pair sure. of invisible dice. Here they come. Got it. Got them? Yep. Did you get them both? Yep. Okay, good, because if you miss one, they're, they're, they're a pain in the neck to find. No, so I got, got them both. both. Great. I want you to do me a favor. Just roll those dice onto the tabletop in front of you. Okay. Okay. Okay, what numbers did you roll? A uh, six and one. A six and one. Okay, pick them up and roll again. Three and two. A three and two. Okay, so you got a six and a one, and then you got a three and a two. I just want you to, to, to take note of the fact that you rolled different numbers both times. So they're not loaded dice. I know they're my dice, and I gave them to you. I want you to know they're not gimmick. They're not strange in any way. They operate exactly as they should, even though they're invisible. So you just rolled a three and a two? Yes. Do you want to... Do you want to keep that roll or do you want to roll again? I'll roll again. Go for it. Roll again. What did uh, you get this time? A four and a seven. No, just kidding. A four and a two. A four and a seven. two. <laughs> so that, a four and a two. Do you want to keep that one or do you want to keep the previous roll? It's up to no, you. I'll keep that one. So you said a four and a what? Two. A four and a two. So what is that? That's six? Mm-hmm. Six. So you rolled a six. Now... We'll start at home base and we will move six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now the other roll was what, a three and a two? That would have been five? Yeah, so if you roll five, we would have been here. Yes. In fact, if you had rolled 
seven, we would have been here. If you'd rolled any number, we would have arrived at any of these other cards. We didn't, though, Maureen. We arrived at this card, the Queen of Clubs. Now, in a second, you're going to wonder if we arrived at this place by chance, by luck, coincidence, or happenstance, and I will tell you it was none of those things. We arrived here only because of that magical force that we call destiny. And you see, destiny, Maureen, has a name, and today, it's yours. <laughs> Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Nicely done. Give yourself a round of applause. You're amazing. All right. Wow. Yeah. Fantastic.